Hello friends and welcome to our broadcast. My name is Larry Hutton and I'm the host of Limitless Life. I love the title we gave this program because once you learn the, the kind of life God has for you, the Lord Jesus Christ has for you, it takes the limits off your life. Abundance, He wants you to live fun, happy, fulfilled lives. He wants you to live the blessed life. He wants you healthy and wealthy and wise and, and full of love and peace and joy and, and all of His goodness operating to you and through you. That's the kind of life the real Jesus wants you to live. And that's what we're all about on this program is limitless life. Let's take the limits off. Man puts limits on you, but let's take the limits off our lives. There's no limit to joy and peace and fun and happiness when you're walking with God the way He wants you to. So we're going to be getting right back into our series that we started with uh, four months ago now. Wow, four months ago I started a series. I thought I had no idea it was going to last this long, but I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep going because it just keeps building and building and building. And every, it's like every lesson can stand alone, just like a message that you could live by. And yet, when you put all the messages together, you know, this is our 80th lesson. So all the, you take today's lesson, you have 80 sermons, 80 messages that you can put together. And it'll just help solidify the wonderful life that God wants you to live and, and help that come to pass in your life. So... This is going to be the end of our 16th week, so next week we'll start our, our fifth month. Um, it's a three-part series, though, a three-part series. The, the first part is part A, the second part is part B, and the third part is part C, A, B, C. I call it the ABCs of true Christianity. And uh, the first part, which is part A, is what God has made you, who you are what God made you because you're in Him, you're in Christ, you're in Jesus. And then part B, the second part of the series, is what God has given you. What do you already have in your possession because you're a Christian, a child of God, because you're in Christ? And then part C is what God has enabled you to do by His grace, uh, what, what He's called you to do, what are you able to do because of part A and part B. And so the first six weeks we covered part A, we covered 23 things that God has made you. Part, um, then the last 10 weeks we've been covering part B, the second part of the series, what God has given you. Uh, we're going to continue that, of course, uh, next week as well. Uh, our foundation text is 1 John 4, 17, as He is, so are we in this world, as He is. So we've been looking at a lot of scriptures showing us who we are, because as He is, so are we. So who are we? And what do we have? As He is, then we have whatever He has. And whatever He can do, we can do, because He's the one that said so, right? So we've, we've been uh, going to a lot of scriptures to establish all these points. Right now, I'm not going to go back. Yesterday, I went over the 23 things again. I'll do that probably this next week. But let's go over the, the things we've talked about God has given you. Number one, God has given you Jesus. He's given you Himself. Number two, God has given you the same anointing that He gave Jesus. Number three, God has given you His Zoe. His very life is inside you. Number four, God has given you a team, a permanent position on that team, and even put Himself on that team. You're on a winning team. Number five, God has given you His love. Number six, God has given you the Holy Spirit. Number seven, God has given you His weapons and His armor. Number eight, God has already given you everything you need to live a fun, happy, fulfilled life. Number nine, God has given you all of heaven's authority and all the power backing it up. Number ten, God has given you nine attributes of His character called fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control have all been given to you already. You have them at your disposal 24-7, 365. Number 11, God has given you the name. Number 12, God has given you the word. Number 13, God's given you the blood. Just those three things in and of themselves gave you the word, gave you the name, gave you the blood. Okay, I can walk in victory now. If you didn't know the other things, if you knew these three things that were given to you and what it entails now, I don't just mean 
the statement, God gave you the name, He gave you the word, He gave you the blood. What does it mean? That's why we went to so many scriptures in detail so you would understand what does it mean He's given me the name? What does it mean He's given me the word? What does it mean He's given me the blood? So you understand how to apply those three things. You will live as an overcomer just knowing those three things. Wow. Number 14, God has given you full access to His presence, to the throne of God anytime that you need it, anywhere you're at, for anything you're facing. He's given you full access to His throne, to His presence, anytime, anywhere, for anything. Number 15, God has given you total freedom and liberty with which to live your life. That's pretty cool. God's given you total freedom and liberty for you to live your life. Number 16, God has given you angels Whew, and they are assigned to you and you can keep them busy. We already found that out. Number 17, God has given you a pathway to a brighter tomorrow and a wonderful future. So many Christians worried about tomorrow, worried about their future because of their past or maybe because of their present. But if they will learn that God has already given them a pathway, to brighter tomorrows and a wonderful future. They can put their faith out there for that and God's grace will flow and tomorrow will be brighter and the next day will be brighter and the next day will be brighter. We already saw that by all the scriptures we've looked at. We ended actually in Genesis 18. We're going to go back there in a second. But one thing we found out about this pathway that God's given us is um, we have to do things. We can't just not do things. In fact, let's just go back to Genesis 18 where, where uh, it was talking about Abraham. And I'll point this back out again. Genesis 18, 19, where God says, For I have known him, talking about Abraham, in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord. And I told you to underline that phrase, the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice, that, so that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he had spoken to him. So it says here, Abraham had to keep or live by the way of the Lord. And then because of that, because of Abraham keeping God's ways, then the Lord could bring to pass everything it says that he promised Abraham. So in other words, just because God promises us things, he promised Abraham things, didn't mean it was just going to come to pass, didn't mean it's going to come to pass in our life. I understand we're under grace, but Abraham was under grace. And we mentioned that last program. But under grace doesn't mean you don't do things. It just means you're not under the law of Moses, under the Mosaic law, in order to be in right standing with God, to have favor with God, and to have God's blessings flow in your life. But you still have to obey you still have to do things. Abraham was under grace. There was no law here, and yet God said he had to keep the way of the Lord in order for... We can't expect to do our own thing and just God's going to put his stamp of approval on it and say, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll just bless you anyway. Uh -uh. No, we've got to keep the way of the Lord. We saw that in Jeremiah 10, 23. Remember Jeremiah 10, 23? The way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. It's not even possible. Man is not even capable without God. Man is not even capable apart from God. The Bible calls man apart from God a fool. In all of his wisdom and intellectual knowledge, he's a fool in the eyes of God. Because if he does not accept Jesus, friend, Come judgment day and he stands before God and he tries to tell him, well, God, I, I happen to know this and knew this and I have these, all of these letters after my name, PhD and DDD and DDS and this and this and this and that. <laughs> That's not going to impress God. Sorry, friends. That's just not going. We've got to tell the truth. The truth is, Jeremiah 10, 23, the way of man is not in himself. Man does not know the way. He does not know the way to walk. It is not in man to direct his own steps you're going to have to look to God to do that. So if we want to have a happy, fun, and fulfilled life, we're going to have to walk the path that God has given us. So it says here in Genesis 18, 19, Abraham kept the way of the Lord. If you look up that word way, it's the, uh, it's the Hebrew word derek. 
and the word derek is plural. It, it's, it's talking about a course of life in plurality, a mode of action uh, with the different courses you're taking. So it's referring to the different ways and the different areas of your life. In other words, God has a way for your spiritual life. God has a way for your physical life. God has a way for your finances. God has a way for your mental stability. In other words, your emotions and your feelings. Uh, so you have mental health. Uh, God has a way for every area of your life and He's given you a path to follow so that it's going to be great. It's going to be a great one if you follow God's path. All right, let's turn over to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3 and ver read a very familiar passage with a lot of people, but I want you to see it. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. So this shows us right here, man's intellect isn't going to cut it. Man's intellect, no matter how smart a man is, I don't care if you're an Einstein, I don't care what your IQ is, your, your smarts are, are dumb, stupidity to God. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. And by the way, I'm, I better come back up the other side. I'm not, I'm not uh, diminishing uh, knowledge, regular knowledge, because regular knowledge helps us. But I'm talk, this is talking about when you're trusting in yourself, when you're trusting in your own smarts and intellect, that's trouble. That's going to lead you to lots of messes in your life. That's what it's talking about. All right. So natural knowledge is good. We should be getting as much natural knowledge as we can. And it's helped me through life. Of course, when I went through college, I, I remember I took every accelerated math course and I learned a lot of stuff and it's helped me. A lot of my natural knowledge helps me today in ministry, walking with God, natural knowledge. So God, God doesn't say remove your mind. He says, renew your mind. <laughs> so, so that means we are still supposed to use our minds and to think with. But the Lord says, listen, your trust, your confidence needs to be not in self, but in God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Underline the word ways. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. This word ways is the same Hebrew word derek that we looked at talking about a course of life, a mode of action, but it's in the plural. So in all your ways, notice when we read it in Genesis 18, 19, Abraham kept the way of the Lord. It was just put singular there, but it could have been put plural and been accurate in the Hebrew. Abraham kept all the ways of the Lord. So in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. Um, in all your ways. How many? So would that include your finances? Is that one of your ways? The way you spend money, the way you handle the money, the way you do things with your money? Yeah, so that's one of your ways. Would it include your physical health? The way you treat your body, the way you put stuff in your body, the way you sleep, the way you exercise, the way, the way, the way. And so, yeah, so the, all your ways acknowledge Him. So no matter what area of your life, the way you treat your spouse, the way. Is it God's way? So God says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. So this word acknowledge, it means to recognize Him, to be aware of Him. I'm, I'm going to give you these definitions because this is talking about as we go through the day, each day of our life, uh, to re acknowledge Him, to recognize Him, to be aware of Him, to consider Him, to declare Him, to discover Him, to regard Him, and to have respect for Him. So that's, that's what it says. And, and when does it say we're supposed to recognize, be aware, consider, declare, discover, regard, and have respect for Him? When? In all your ways. In other words, as you go about your daily activities, your daily chores, your daily routines, when I, I went to the driving range yesterday because I like to play golf, and so I just went out and decided I'm going to work on my game a little bit. And I remember while I'm out at the driving range, all of a sudden I just start talking to Jesus, talking to the Lord. I, I, want, to, I want to be aware of Him. Even when I'm on the golf course, 
Now, he's never helped my golf game. I don't know why, but, <laughs> but, but I want to be aware of him. I want to consider him, declare him, discover him, regard him, have respect for him in all my ways. So it doesn't matter if it's a spiritual way or just a natural thing you're doing. He'll direct you along every path of life if you will recognize him, be aware of him, consider him, declare him, discover him, regard him, and have respect for him. Um, and when I say every path of life, I am talking about your financial path, your marital path, your every path that you take. Think about this for a minute. First John chapter 1, verse 5 said, Then this is the message that we have heard of him uh, and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness. So if God is light and he's directing your path, then wouldn't that tell you your path is going to be bright? Remember I, I said God has already given you brighter tomorrows and a wonderful future. So if God is light and He's directing our path, our path is bright, then that means the works of darkness can't attach themselves. They can attack, but they cannot attach themselves to you because you're going to stay on the way of brightness, the way of light, God's path. But verse 5 of Proverbs 3 has a key here. Proverbs 3, 5. We know verse 6, you know, um, in all your ways, in all your ways, that's the one we've been talking about, in all your ways. But verse 5 has a real key here. Um, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. Trust is faith. Leaning not to your own understanding is faith in grace. So I, th I think this is showing out faith and grace right here. Trust is faith and then don't lean to your own way of doing things, your own understanding, the way to handle this person, the way to talk to this person, the way to do this investment, the way to uh, get your body healthy, the way, the way, the way. You can't figure, out, figure it out in your own head. So you're going to have to trust faith in what God's already given you, grace. No one ever gets saved because of their smarts. <laughs> By grace, you're saved through faith. So we have to trust God by learning and walking along the path that he has given us. Are you all getting this? I hope, I hope you are. Look at uh, Psalm 37, verse 23. Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man, that's you and me, are ordered of the Lord, and he delights in his way. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. The English uh, or easy to read version says it this way, the Lord shows us how we should live and he is pleased when he sees his people living that way. I mean, that's no different than you as a natural parent. You're bringing up the little baby, the little child, the little kid, the little the teenager. You, you, you raise them up and you show them how to live. And when you as a parent see them living the way they're supposed to live, it brings you pleasure. That's what this verse is saying about God and you and us living His way. It brings Him pleasure when we live His way. And of course, as uh, Matthew 7, it says, if you as a natural, natural, apart from God, evil human being <laughs> know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more God shall your heavenly Father give good things to them that ask Him? So uh, God is pleased with us. And of course, we know God's pleased with us when we walk in His ways, right? Because Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. So we know God's pleased with us when we walk by faith. But I believe this verse is, is also saying something else. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and He delights in His way. I emphasized He and His. You might want to underline them, or maybe if you have a King James or some of the other translations, you'll notice the words he and is are italicized. They are not part of the Hebrew, word, Hebrew uh, words that are used here. 
So, hmm, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and delights way. Hmm. Delights. If you look up the word delights, it means to be pleased with, to have pleasure, to take delight in, and to have favor. And the word way is the, the plural word ways, uh, Derek, that we've been looking at in, in Genesis and a couple other places. So when you put those two words together, it is saying God's ways are delightful. God's ways bring you pleasure and God's ways cause you to have favor. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. So my paraphrase, not putting those words he and his in there, would read something like this. God has already set up and prepared every step on the pathway of the righteous and they bring nothing but pleasure and God's favor. Isn't that good? God has already set up and prepared every step on the pathway of the righteous. And those steps that way bring nothing but pleasure and God's favor. That's why we want to walk in God's ways. Hallelujah. David gives us a key on how to know the steps uh, that God has laid for us in Psalm 119. So let's turn over there. We've got a few minutes left here in this program. Psalm 119. Let's go to verse, boy, he says a lot here in this 119th Psalm, but let's go to verse 133 and pick this out to start with. Psalm 119, verse 20, 133, David says, Order my steps in your word. Of course, we've already found out God's given us his word. It's our lifeline. But now this is kind of showing us that God's word contains a map, a map to follow after that when we follow this map, we're going to be walking in the ways of God. And as long as we're following the instructions that are on this map, uh, we'll be at the right place. We'll be at the right time. We'll be doing the right thing. Amen. You know, we've mentioned before Isaiah 55, 8, that God's ways and His thoughts are so much higher. But I want to turn over there, see if we have time to finish this this morning. We can end there. But go to Isaiah 55, uh, and let's look at these verses so we get a little more understanding. In Isaiah 55, I'm going to start in verse 7. It says, let the wicked forsake his way. Wicked just referring to people that are not walking with God or don't, not born again. Not, that doesn't mean they're necessarily wicked the way we determine wicked people. But uh, wicked simply means people that don't know God, all right? So ungodly people, in other words. Ungodly, not godly, but un. So let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he'll have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts, look what God says in verse 8, My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and does not return there, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent. So this is all talking about you and me learning God's thoughts and walking in God's ways. Let me explain that. My thoughts, he says, first of all, he said, forsake your way, verse 7. Forsake your way. Remember, we found out man's way is not going to get you to the blessings. Forsake your way and start looking at God because um, your thoughts, forsake your thoughts and forsake your ways because man's uh, thoughts aren't and ways are not God's. For verse 8, for God's thoughts and ways are higher than man's thoughts and ways. And then he says this, for, starts with the word for, verse 9, you might want to underline it, for, in other words, I'm going to tie in what I just said, my thoughts and my ways are higher than yours, for just like the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your thoughts. For, so now he's going to tie it in again, still talking about his thoughts and his ways. For, as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and does not return there, but waters the earth and brings forth fruit and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. In other words, that rain comes down and does something, brings forth fruit, right? So shall, look at verse 11, so shall 
my word be that goes out of my mouth. What's he saying? So shall for. So shall, just like the rain brings forth uh, harvest in the earth, so shall my word bring forth my thoughts and my ways. Don't take it out of context. The context is letting us know we can know God's thoughts. We can know God's ways. They're contained in God's road map so that our tomorrows will be brighter and our future will be wonderful. God wants you to know that His word is that road map. His word is His thoughts. His word contains His ways. So the more time, more time we spend in the word, the more times our, our minds are going to be renewed to His type of thinking, understanding His type of ways, then we'll walk in it. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to walk in His ways, and we only do that when we're thinking His thoughts. And so I encourage you, man, stay full of the Word. Man, get a hold of it. We have eight different subjects of scriptures, CDs or MP3s on eight different subjects that you can listen to and just get full of the Word when you're driving, when you're showering, when you're eating breakfast, going to bed at night. Listen to the Word of God and it'll fill you up to overflowing. Thank you for joining us, friends. Thank you for supporting us financially. It's a wonderful blessing. We'll see you next week and make sure you keep support, keep sharing these things on social media and any way you can share. People need to hear the truth. Knowing truth makes them free. See you next time. Have a Jesus-filled day. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to larryhutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call one 1- 888-887-WORD Do you know yourself? Who you really are? Not the natural carnal person that the world says you are, but the saved, word-filled, Holy Spirit-empowered believer that you really are in the eyes of God. At times, each of us has struggled with our identity, ability, and purpose in our lives as believers. But God's Word is filled with His descriptions of who you really are in Him. In this two-part scripture recording, you will hear Dr. Hutton quote all the Bible scriptures about who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what you can do in Christ. In Him scriptures will help you build and strengthen the very foundations of your faith, enabling you to believe and therefore speak all that God has created you to be, to have, and to do, not in your own power, but in Him. To order In Him scriptures, go to larryhutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to larryhutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.